Hi everyone, my name is Melanie and today I just wanted to share a little behind the scenes of my 3D process and how I got from this to this. Now this 3D icon was part of a project in which I created 30 animated icons over the course of 30 days. I'm breaking down this puzzle style raccoon today, but I used the same process across all the icons. Having a strong, repeatable process was essential in this project because it not only sped up my workflow, but it allowed me to create a consistent look across each set of six icons. So if you're curious about the process of creating animated icons in 3D, let's dive in. Everything starts with a sketch. I used Procreate here because I knew I wanted very symmetrical shapes and Procreate has an awesome symmetry function but oftentimes I'll just use pencil and paper. This step is just about getting your ideas out and finding out what works before you further refine your sketch. Oftentimes I will take this sketch straight into Cinema 4D to use as a guide for modeling. But in this case, I knew I wanted very precise geometry that fit together like a puzzle. So I actually went into Adobe Illustrator and vectorized my artwork. I took that vectorized artwork into Cinema 4D and used it as a base for modeling. Bringing in vectorized artwork can make the modeling process much quicker. However, it can create problems if you want to bend your shapes. Bending improper geometry in Cinema 4D will give you a result something like this. If I planned to bend anything, I would have modeled my geometry in Cinema 4D, creating quads, which is a nice even mesh that bends smoothly. Animation is generally the longest and most tedious step, but it can also be the most fun because you finally get to see your designs come to life. Now, animation can take many forms. Sometimes you want your animation to be really smooth, and other times you want it to be bouncy. In this case, I wanted a stop motion feel, which is kind of jittery and jumps from one position to the next. Now, texturing is my favorite part. It's so fun. You basically get to create materials from nothing. So you can create anything you can imagine. Everything from real world materials like steel or wood to stylized materials like watercolor or sketches. For this project, I wanted wooden puzzle blocks, so I went a more realistic route, creating a nice wood grain texture. Once you have a base material, changing the look of that material is very easy. For different colored woods, I simply adjusted the gamut and voila, four different wooden colored blocks. Sometimes lighting can be tricky, but in this simple animation, I just used a basic three-point lighting setup. Now, rendering in Cinema 4D might not work the way you'd expect it to. Instead of getting a movie, you get a sequence of photos. For instance, my animation was three seconds long and 24 frames per second. So I got 72 images when I rendered out of Cinema 4D. Now, this was a pretty small project and it rendered out fairly quickly but sometimes renders can take days or even weeks depending on the size of your animation. After Effects is where you get to put all those photos together in a string and make your final animation. This is also where all the compositing and color correction takes place. My raccoon just needed some minor tweaks, bumping up the contrast and brightness slightly. Once you've gone through all those steps, you can render out of After Effects your final animation. So I hope this video gave you a little glimpse into the process behind a 3D animation, and more specifically, my process. Because everybody's process is a little bit different, and every project has its unique set of challenges. So I often tweak my own process to fit the needs of a project. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, I'd love to hear them. Just drop them below or feel free to DM me.
Once again, my name is Melanie, and you can find me at MoGraphMel across all the social media channels. I hope you all have a great day, and until next time, happy animating!